Hey, I'm Maddox, the designer behind Control, and I'm here to teach you how to play. Let's jump in. All right, so we have our nice and shiny box here. We're gonna open that up, and first we have the rules. We're gonna give you a basic overview to get you started. Anything that we don't cover, you can find in here, like uh, what happens when the deck runs out, situational details, any background story, that good stuff. Next, we have our timeline tokens that we'll take out. These, uh, you're gonna get one of these if you win a round. And in a two or four player game, it's first player or team to three tokens, and in a three player game, it's first to two. Um, so set those aside. And then next, we have our cards. So we wanna remove these two cards from the game um, and place them in front of players, as these are just quick reference cards. You don't wanna shuffle these in. They're gonna give players an idea of what they can do on their turn, how many fuel cells are there in the game, what types they are, all that good stuff. So set those aside or in front of players. And now we have our deck, and let's talk about setup. Alrighty, for setup, you want to first shuffle the deck. This one's already shuffled. Deal each player five cards. So in this case, we're playing a three-player game um, and put the deck between them. And then if we're playing a four-player game, uh, let's say my cards were here, the player sitting opposite of me would be on my team. So turn to play would rotate from one team to the next. Since we're playing a three-player game, I'm just going to grab this right here. And let's look at a card. So on a card, you're going to find a few different pieces of info. One is the fuel cell charge in the top left. So that number goes from one to 10 and it relates to the goal of the game, which is to reach a fuel cell charge of 21 or more on your installed fuel cell. So installed means it's in play in front of you that you took a turn to do that. Um, and we'll get to more on that later, but that, that's where that number relates to that. Next is an icon. So we have the icon of a bronze fuel cell here. It's that burn icon and then a silver fuel cell over here, which is that silver icon. And then the abilities are below that. And those are gonna be activated in different ways. So with our turn of play, we're gonna look at how we can use these cards or activate their abilities. All right, so we all got our cards and we're ready to play. So it's my turn and I'm trying to decide which of the four actions do I want to take. Well, in this case, I'm just going to start simple. That first one is straightforward, is just draw a card. When you do that, your turn's done and it would continue on to the next person. If you have more than seven cards in your hand though, you cannot draw. So let's say turn to play continued back to me and now I'm thinking, I'm ready to start making a push. I'm going to install a card. So let's say I installed this wormhole for a charge of four. Uh, now it's a bronze fuel cell, so I don't get the ability when I install it. I just get that number, but it gives me four towards my goal of 21 or more. Instead, though, let's say I wanted to install this silver fuel cell. So the trick about silver fuel cells are their abilities are activated when they're installed. So this rift allows me to draw a card or destroy a Nova in play, and I get the charge. So I'm installing that in front of me, and there's no Novas out there, so I'm just going to draw a card. That was pretty nice. Um, and now the turn would continue on to the next player. Let's say they decided to install this five, and then this player decided to install, oh hey, a Nova. Uh, they might be feeling safe because I just played my Rift. Well, it's our turn again, and we're looking at burning a bronze fuel cell. So instead of installing it in front of you for its point value, you can burn a bronze fuel cell to the discard pile, which will activate its ability. So this singularity is pretty nice. It says destroy all bronze fuel cells in play, including your own. Well, I don't have any, and those two guys out there have two. So um, I'm going to play this uh, singularity, which destroys both their bronze fuel cells, which go to the discard pile. So that's how you burn a fuel cell. It has to be one of the bronze fuel cells with that burn icon, and they go straight to the discard pile to activate the ability. So lastly, we want to look at diffusion. Uh, let's say we just burned that bronze fuel cell, and now... This player installed a five, and this player is just gonna draw a card. Um, it's our turn. So in order to diffuse a fuel cell, you have to have a charge of equal or higher value. So this guy, he has a five. Um, we have two fives and a six. So we could diffuse that fuel cell with any one of those three cards. Now, they can be silver or bronze, it doesn't matter, but in this case, I like the ability on these fives, so I'm gonna use this six to diffuse a fuel cell. This can't be stopped, so we're gonna play this six on top of this five, and that sends both of them to the discard pile. And that's diffusion. All right, so let's say the game has progressed through a few turns, and we're now at this place where we're at a charge of 16, and it's our turn, and we have a nine. So we can just play that nine, install it in front of us, call it a day, take the win token, and say, thank you guys for helping me escape that rupture. That would be what happened if we would win. But 
that didn't happen because it's not our turn. Um, it's this guy's turn, and the reason is I want to show y'all how a time stop works. It's a special bronze card where you can play it any time a bronze fuel cell is being burned by any opponent. So it doesn't have to be played in turn order. So in this case, this guy's like, you're getting close to winning. I'm worried. I'm going to play this antimatter, which you know, I'm going to force you to discard a card, a random card in your hand, and then one of your choice. So he's burning that to the discard pile. And we're like, ooh, we don't want to do that. We're going to play this time stop and say, no, sir, we're not going to do that. We're going to stop you right there. Uh, but this player now, uh, it would revert to his turn because his turn was stopped. His ability didn't go through, so it would go back to him. But this player over here says, mm, I have a time stop, and I'm going to time stop your time stop. So that cancels the time stop and allows the original ability to go through, and we'd have to you know, discard a random card and then one of our choice. But the, t the time stop can be time stopped. And uh, since the original ability went through, you know, turn of play would continue as normal. He wouldn't get another turn after that. So that's how time stop works. And lastly, I want to talk about the four player game. It is just your area that you're trying to hit 21 or more on. It's not your combined area with your uh, teammate. So you have to hit it in your area and it has to be by the end of your turn or at the end of your turn, I should say. And that's how the four player game works. Cool, guys. We hope you like it. Can't wait to hear what you think. Thanks.